Hi, my name is Hyvin Huang, and I'm a member of the Studies in Writing and Rhetoric editorial board. Steve Parks, the series editor, asked a few of us to offer some thoughts on uh, how do I know when I have a book project, or more specifically, how do we know when a project really deserves to be a book as opposed to uh, something more contained, um, like an article or a chapter in an edited collection. Um, so we all know that uh, whether you're writing an article or a chapter or a book, uh, there, we need to have a clear sense of purpose, we need to be speaking to conversations in the field, in our case writing studies, and generally we should be offering some fresh insight into issues that are important to those of us who study writing. Um, in my view, one of the key differences between a book and an article length work is that a book offers much more texture and dimension and perspective than an article can, given its page constraints. Um, so within its constraints, an article needs to be much more streamlined and um, needs to move much more quickly to its argument. Um, whereas a book, uh, although it obviously still needs a clear, clear sense of purpose, um, uh, offers much more texture and much more perspective. So, so those multiple perspectives and dimensions may come from um, uh, theoretical concepts and uh, research that uh, in academic circles. They may come from socio-historical context. They may come from considering multiple perspectives of people who are affected by the issue being discussed. Um, let me give you an example of how I attempted to uh, think about dif the difference between an article and a book in, in my own writing. Uh, a few years back, I published an article in College Composition and Communication where I analyzed the, um, a discourse event on a college campus where racial minority student organizations and the primarily white student government were encountering some tensions. And my argument in that piece was really about um, how a rhetoric of racial injury uh, was governing the discourse, uh, that particular discourse event, and how that rhetoric of racial injury was was limiting the students and what was possible in their in their conversations. Um, years, several years later, that be, that uh, article, that analysis became part of my book, uh, "Writing Against Racial Injury: The Politics of Asian American Student Rhetoric." And in the book, I really tried to think about how to uh, write with more texture, write with more dimension, um, and, and that would help us in a way that would help us understand that particular discourse event. So, for example, that meant thinking about how have Asian Americans been racialized throughout uh, their language, our language and literacy um, history. Uh, what are the um, ways in which, different ways in which uh, racial theories might help inform our understanding of, of this particular event? What do we need to understand about the Asian American movement in order to understand um, these contemporary students and the challenges that they're facing around uh, racial politics on college campuses? Um, so those are just a few examples um, in, in my own writing. Uh, let me give you a couple more examples. Um, when I was writing this book, I was really inspired by two, uh, two books that I consider exemplary, um, both written by uh, mentors I knew from my grad school days. Uh, one is Jacqueline Jones Royster's Traces of a Stream. Um, and in that book, if you look at the table of contents, you see that Royster has divided the book into a rhetorical view, a historical view, and ideological view. And it's these views that really illustrate the kind of texture that I'm talking about in books. Um, her treatment of time in relation to, uh, as being connected to social relations, I think is really important and uh, helps explain why the book needs to be a book. Um, another example is Brenda Brueggemann's Lend Me Your Ear, and toward the end of the book she analyzes uh, uh, poetry performances by deaf and hearing poets, and in order to really understand that moment, you've got to understand readers really need to have read uh, the full book where she um, where she discusses deafness in terms of pathology a medical pathologizing of deafness deafness in terms of community um, the lived experiences of communities uh, of deaf hard of hearing people 
um, and also uh, deafness in relation to educational context. And so it's it's only with that texture that we could understand the um, the performances that come up at the end of the book. Uh, so in short, um, I would say that a book offers much more texture and dimension and perspective, and that can come from a number of places um, depending on the topic of the book. So that could come from um, the perspectives offered by individuals and groups who are affected by the particular issue being discussed. Those perspectives and tech, that texture could come from um, theories and research that come out of uh, our disciplinary conversations. Um, that texture could come from a fuller understanding of the his socio-historical context that's relevant to the issue at hand. So I hope that this uh, has been helpful for you and good luck with your book proposals.